the CZ Model 50, let's check it out. Now I'm a big fan of any firearm that comes out of the Czech Republic. I mean, they make some really high quality firearms and of course CZ is known for its good quality with the CZ-75 and all of its variants. This is the CZ-50, but it's actually the VZ-50. And so we're going to take a look at this surplus 32 ACP firearm. Uh, I got this at Classic Firearms. I want to thank them for sending it for the test and evaluation. If you haven't seen the factory tour that we did and you love surplus firearms, you got to check the video out. And I'll have it linked right above. This is a classic. And guys, one of the things about surplus firearms is if you see them available, that's the time to buy them. The price is low. It's a great time when they're still plentiful. Once they dry up, the price goes up. It happens over and over. One thing I love are old surplus handguns. Uh, they just have a lot of soul to them. There's a lot of history behind these. Uh, these were designed actually in the 40s, but introduced into the Czech Army in 1950. Uh, and that's, of course, after World War II. Uh, it is in 32 ACP, uh, and which was very popular during the time, especially for you know officers, police units. And, but these were also sold commercially. First thing we're going to do is make sure the gun, though, is unloaded. We're going to drop the magazine. It is a eight-round magazine, but I could comfortably get nine rounds in here, and it would function just fine. And we're going to check to make sure that it is unloaded, which it is. Um, now, you'll notice that the hammer's back, and I'm going to show you a couple of things about this safety. Uh, if you'll notice right here is your safety lever, and as you pull it down, it'll go into safe. But if you continue to pull it down, it's a decocker. So we have it in decock position, and then it is in safe mode. Uh, then bring it back up and then it's in the fire position. Now this is different than most of your current models like the 1911 which brings it down for fire and up for safety. Uh, so it's a little bit different but it just takes a little bit of a manual of arms to figure that out. Your magazine release is right here at the top of your grip. Now a lot of European designs had the heel type grip especially during this time but um, they chose to go with it. It's a little bit of a stretch because of the way this grip fits, but it does come up somewhat. Uh, the Model 70 is a little more difficult to get to. Here, the magazine fits in, no bevel, but it goes in pretty easily. Uh, you have a nice finger groove on the end of your magazine. Uh, these only come with one magazine uh, from all the different sources I've seen. Uh, it does have the Bakelite kind of plastic grips and has these grooves, and it gives you a really decent feel to it, a good grip on it. Uh, and this is a lot of times typical for uh, Czech firearms. They have kind of an unusual, <laughs> kind of a ribbing effect. It is a blowback design, and that means that it does have a fixed barrel, which is going to give us really good accuracy, which is typical. Now, these are very similar to the Walther PP and PPK. In fact, I just happen to have a Walther PP right here. Uh, this is, of course, a very classic design firearm. It is blowback. There are a number of differences between the two, and I'm not going to get into them as much, mainly just to see that this was an inspiration for these firearms. Now, because of the date of manufacture, these are uh, Curio and Relic eligible. So if you have a CNR license, you can order these. Now, look here on the slide, and it says VZOR, and that stands actually for version or model in Czech. And then it says 50 caliber, so it's really the Model 50 caliber and then right here in this circle is 7.65 which stands for 32 ACP or 32 auto. Now 32 ACP was actually John Browning's first caliber that he designed um, and so we have the 25 ACP, the 32 ACP, 380, 45 ACP 
And so these have been very popular for a long time in Europe. Uh, they've kind of lost some of their popularity over the past few years because 380s have gotten even smaller. <laughs> so it really, you know, you get a little bit more firepower and a little better self-defense capability. Uh, one of the things about this firearm particularly is that it has some upgrades to it over this, the original Model 50. Uh, one of the big things is that it has an extended serrations. On the originals, the serrations were about a third shorter. Uh, so this gives you a little bit extra. Also, on the, a lot of the original 50s, it had a solid hammer. This has the commander style with the hole through it. The takedown lever, which has serrations, actually had a crosshatch kind of pattern added to it. This one re retains the original. Another thing too, the serial number was placed right below the ejection port. But one of the things I'm going to show you is right here we have a lion, and this is their proof mark, and then 69. So that denotes that this handgun was made in 1969. 1970 is when they went with the Model 70. The serrations that are on top of the slide are absent on the original Model 50, uh, but this is an anti-glare. Uh, the sights, you can see, are very low profile, and uh, you know they're minimal, but really you can get fairly decent accuracy. It's just a little difficult to pick up. Now, when you have the firearm in your hand, it rides high enough to where there's not really a danger of any kind of hammer bite or slide bite because it really rides up there. I mean, it has a decently high bore axis but it just really points very well. Of course, it's an all steel frame and you know it just gives it a little bit of heft, but with 32 ACP, it's already pretty minimal already. There are serrations that are on the trigger. Uh, so when you get your finger on that trigger, <laughs> it just has a good meat to it. I mean, it's not uncomfortable at all and you wouldn't even know it unless you saw it, but it definitely keeps you from slipping off of that trigger. Now, speaking of triggers, uh, this is a double single action semi-automatic pistol. Uh, and we're going to make sure the gun isn't loaded, so I'm going to drop the magazine again, check the chamber. Uh, you'll notice that the hammer is in the rear position. So if you rack the slide or if you fire this handgun, the hammer is going to come back. And then when you fire, this is single action, it drops. It's a very short, very crisp pull. Then the gun will fire and the hammer will be in the rear position for the second shot. If you bring down your hammer and you put it in the decock position, and we're going to put it back up into safe, you pull the trigger and it actuates the hammer. Uh, and then subsequent shots, the hammer will be in the rear position, just in that first shot. So let's look at the trigger action. Has a little bit of take up right here, and then a very nice crisp break. Uh, then follow up shots, the reset, you'll hear two clicks. If you don't hear two clicks, you may pull it too soon. But here it is really pretty fast, and then we're back on it. One thing about the reset is if you let it go to one and you pull it, it won't reset the trigger. And so you have to bring it back out and then it'll fire. You know, it was funny. When I was firing this gun, I never even noticed that. It was later on when I was testing the trigger. Uh, so that is just one thing that to note about this firearm. Now, when it comes to double action, it's going to be much heavier and it's made that way. And we pull and it is just a long very smooth pull but and it does fire pretty quickly so it's pull and then it fires now as far as trigger pull weight single action four pounds 13 ounces four pounds 10.3 ounces four pounds 14 ounces so about the four and three quarter pound mark double action 11 pounds, 15.6 ounces, and I'll tell you, it's about the 12 pound mark. I'm not going to do them over and over because it's putting too much stress on my trigger gauge. But it's definitely a heavy pull, but really when you're firing it, it doesn't seem quite as bad. But the single action is absolutely beautiful. Now I saw this round disc right here, and I'm going to show you what the function is. Uh, here we have our extractor, and of course it's external. If there is a round in the chamber, it's going to push it out, and then you're going to have a little bit of a nub pointed right here. So to know that the gun is loaded, this is the loaded chamber indicator. Now the front strap is smooth. Uh, with the little finger extension on the magazine, though, it gives you a good feel to this pistol. Uh, while it is a small pistol, it really fits the hand very well, at least for my hands. And again, I have medium-sized hands, so if you have larger hands, could be a little small, but from all indications that I've seen, you know, it's just a pleasurable gun to shoot with most people. 
Now, Czech has always been a little bit of a rebel <laughs> because one of the things about the communist countries, especially Eastern Bloc, is they came out with the Makarov, which is somewhat based on the wall they're designed. Uh, but this is what most of your countries went to after World War II or something very similar. And the Czechs decided to go a different route. And so this is really what the Russians or the Bulgarians, other countries were carrying. And yet the Czechs were going with the Model 50. And then, of course, the Model 70. And then here we have a Yugoslavian Zastava. Uh, this is the Model 70 in Yugoslavia. And so you can see that it's definitely a design difference. I think the CZ lines are so clean and nice. Uh, I did a review on the Model 70. This is a great little gun. Uh, but I think that the CZ-50 really has it beat as far as just style. The Zastava Model 70 really is more like an updated Takarov. To give you a little comparison between the calibers, 32 ACP Full Metal Jacket is running about 70 grains. Uh, then you have your 380 ACP, which is 100 grains. And then you have your 9mm Parabellum, and that is 115 grain, and of course it goes on up to 147 grain. So there is a quite a bit of difference in bullet mass. Uh, one of the things about 9mm and 380 is the same diameter, it's just a shorter case, less powder, less pressure. So the 32 ACP is definitely a much smaller round, and of course that shows in ballistic capability. But here we have the PMC Bronze, and this is a 61 grain uh, jacketed hollow point. And so you've got some really good uh, expansion here. But one of the things a lot of people feel is they'd rather go ahead and carry the full metal jacket because of penetration. Whereas because this is only 60 grains, especially in the winter time, maybe a little more difficult to penetrate. Uh, but if you're going to carry 32 ACP, guys, you really need to practice. This typically 380 ACP is the minimum for most experts with self-defense. But with all the studies that have been done, 32 ACP has been an effective self-defense round. It's just shot placement is important, but it is important with all of these calibers. Now we're going to be testing out some of the Privy Partisan. This is just full metal jacket. It's 71 grain. And then we have some PMC bronze. This is 60 grain jacketed hollow points. I wanted to see and test how well it would do. Pretty cool witness holes on the magazine. Nine rounds. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Now, taking the CZ-50 down to the range is a pleasure. I mean, 32 ACP is very mild on recoil. Uh, then you add the steel frame. Uh, it's just a great shooting little handgun. Very accurate, very reliable, had no issues whatsoever. Uh, it just fired. And so it's, uh, you know, a little different. Even though the magazine release is not here on the hill, you have to kind of adjust to get it, but it's, it's not too bad. Uh, then you have the finger rest, and it kind of fills the hand for a small firearm. Of course, 32 ACP is not the best self-defense round, but it can be very effective. Uh, and we did shoot hollow points just to check it out. These are 60 grain PMC jacketed hollow points. Now, obviously, these sights are fairly low profile. I mean, this is made for a small pocket pistol, and most of your military surplus firearms have those low pro sights. Uh, for me, I would definitely want to put a little white paint or something right here on the edge. But uh, really, we were able to get very good accuracy even with these sights. Now for disassembly, we're going to drop the magazine, go ahead and check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. Uh, to break this down, it's actually a fairly simple design. Uh, right here, just go ahead and depress this takedown lever, and when you pull the slide back, lift up. you got to make sure you've got that depressed, there it goes, and then it comes out. Uh, you can see that the spring is attached to the barrel, which is typical for your blowback actions. This will give you really top-notch accuracy because the barrel is, does not move. I mean, it is definitely stable. Uh, but the machining on these, uh, while some of them have been kind of rough, especially different models and according to where they were built, uh, and there were two different factories they built these, but this one seems to be in really nice shape. Uh, again, 1969. Uh, here with the slide, the bluing on this is really nice as well. 
but uh, just a very simple design but yet very effective and that's all that needs to be done to field strip the pistol now when you take your recoil spring you'll notice that one end is bailed out just a little bit that goes on the outside here up to the slide and as we bring our slide in you want to get your barrel through now once you get the barrel through right before you bring it down depress your lever and it locks onto the rails and the great thing is it doesn't have a magazine disconnect uh, this also which i should have pointed out when we had it disassembled has a firing pin block safety so this can be carried safely with one in the chamber so if it's dropped it's not going to go off but the great thing is even if you have one in the chamber again you can put it on safety and carry it kind of cocked and locked or you can bring that down and decock it but don't forget that it's now on safe so you have a dead trigger unless you push it back up very similar to the Beretta 92. It's six and three quarter inches in total length. It's four and a half inches high, and it's just a little bit under an inch as far as width, and really that's only because of the controls. A very thin, very pointable handgun. The weight, one pound, 8.6 ounces. Now, aside from it being a lot of fun to shoot and reliable, well, there are some downsides. Uh, 32 ACP is not the best self-defense round. Um, you know, they do make some pretty decent self-defense loads for it, and uh, it can be effective. Uh, the recoil is so mild, it makes it nice. You can get those extra shots on, you know, if you have to. Uh, the other thing is the weight, of course, it's all steel, and compared to a lot of the polymer frame, small little subcompacts, you know, it kind of knocks this out of its league. But the collectability is really high on these firearms. And as far as ammo choices, they can be limited to some companies. Of course, you can order it. Uh, I know we have a local Palmetto State Armory, and they usually have a decent selection of 32 ACP. And really, it's about the same price as 9mm, so it's not too extravagant. Um, and really, just taking this out to the range for a fun day, putting a couple of boxes through it, uh, it makes it well worth it. It's a lot of fun, very handy, easy to conceal if you decide to do that. Uh, so, But definitely, when these come in, guys, I'm telling you, the price is super low. That does not reflect on the quality of these firearms. They will go up in price once they start to dry up. Now I got this from Classic Firearms, as I mentioned, and these run $249.99. And really, for the all steel frame, the blued finish, the quality, that is a great price. They're fun to shoot. They have low recoil. I mean, they're just great little firearms. Guys, it's sad, but we had to retire the original dummy. Uh, this hole right here, it just it's just getting bigger. Uh, and we have shot tens of thousands of rounds through this target. These are excellent. And his brother stepped in and taken his place. Guys, you get a 10% discount if you use the link down below, suit 0 in the coupon code. And these are the best training tool out there for firearm training. Now again, I want to thank Ben at Classic Firearms for sending the CZ50 for this test and evaluation. Um, those guys have a wide array of different surplus firearms and getting more all the time. So it's a great source to check out. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. I'm a big fan of any check lows. Okay. But these were also sold to commercial. These were also sold to commit firearms for centuries. <laughs> centuries. In fact, I just happened to have a 380 and say that anything below 380 is not really. I don't want to say all that already. But compared to a lot. Okay.